Anything else on Nacha that you think specifically CPAs, accounting firms, uh, small regional providers need to understand that's, that's changing? One of the things that pops in my head is around tokenization of data. Sure, tokenization is a, is a big topic. Um, you know, that has been getting, you know, that has gotten a lot of press, you know, over the years. Um, what you need to keep in mind, if tokenization applies to you or could apply to you, uh, you need to familiarize yourself with the, uh, the triggers of that. It's uh, volume based metrics. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, how many transactions are you doing and pushing through the system. Um, and you need to look at your, your flow of funds to make sure you're evaluating that correctly if you're moving money out of multiple entities. Um, and increasingly, uh, when you get your uh, risk assessment and your audits from your, um, your auditors for NACHA, they're going to be asking that question, uh, I believe starting this year, the firm that we hire to do ours has, has put it in their form this year uh, to start reporting on tokenization so that, that can be then you know, reported to the banks. And, and if, for those of you who don't know what that means, so it, it, imagine you go to a website and you're gonna buy something, you've bought something there before, uh, they're not storing your credit card information, it is tokenized. It might be a bunch of stars followed by the last four digits of your credit card. They're, that website isn't physically storing it it's a third party who's tokenizing the data. That's what we're talking about, where you can't store your client's bank information. So if you're a, 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 an accounting firm providing payroll services, um, you can't store that banking information. Now there's, uh, Chris alluded to it, there are thresholds where you, if you're a, a, a you know, smaller company, a smaller number of transactions, you don't have to comply yet. But I think it's safe to say, Chris, that the bar just low keeps on lowering, and yes. I would have an expectation. We don't, we don't have any commitment. We don't have a, Nacha hasn't published a, 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 a statement or a date on this. I would have an expectation within the next two three years, all businesses, all data must be tokenized. You can't store. You simply can't store bank information. Period. It's not going to be just for bigger providers. What do you think about that? Well, I, I would agree, uh, just in principle, uh, to that statement, Mike. If if Nacha doesn't do it, states will. Uh, you know, another thing that's sweeping through the country right now are you know, different financial privacy acts, uh, different right. uh, you know privacy acts, just in general. Um, you know, the the one thing that I, I wanted to to make sure I mention here, uh, I was actually having a conversation um, with one of our VPs on information security. And we were talking about all the different ways that financial information is stored, not just in an ACH file, but you know, how are you corresponding with your customers? How are you capturing that information? You know, right. in your in your SharePoint or your Outlook, do you have a whole bunch of account numbers or you know personal uh, you know PII, which is personally identifiable information? Is that information just kind of resident on your system? Um, you know. These are kinds of questions that um, you know we need to be asking ourselves all the time. You know, what information do we have? Where is it? What safeguards do we have in place? And in this, you know, that recommendation actually goes for everybody um, because if you have information about other people, largely the states are coming after that in these new privacy laws and saying hey, we need to make sure that you're doing proper safeguards to keep people's information safe from hacks and scams and you know um, all the different threats out there.